what's up what's up what's up my friends it is tag time so glad that you're here taking this time for us to uh, get together get god's word find out what it is that he has for us to share man i miss you guys i've only seen a couple of y'all uh in the last long time but man i really really miss you and uh can't wait to see you again you can hang out and uh you know i can find out about all the stuff that you got going on in this new school year Anyway, I'm glad that you're taking this time to watch this video. God has a word for you. He has a word for me. And we're going to grow based on hearing his word and doing what he says. It's always a very important part of it. Father, we pray that you'll lead us and guide us in learning your word today. Pray that you'll help us live the lives that you have for us to live as believers. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So what we're going to talk about today is prayer sometimes we go into a certain position when we pray we bow our head and close our eyes sometimes we fold our hands and things like that and those are just positions of prayer that we go into for different reasons you don't always have to pray the exact same way and there's a lot of information for us to know and share about prayer but we only have a little bit of time today so we're just going to cover one aspect and today the part of prayer that i want to talk about is about hearing God's voice. Now, some of y'all have cell phones. Many of y'all have cell phones or have been on a cell phone. And one of the things that can happen on a cell phone is that you can be talking to somebody. And like me, sometimes I'll be talking to my wife and she doesn't always say something. And so, you know, I'll just keep talking. I'm telling her whatever it is that I'm telling her. And then after a while, I'll kind of look and be like, you know what I'm saying? You know, and she doesn't say anything. And then I find out that while it looks like we're talking, name is on the phone. It says that a call is going on. You know, you got the little timer counting up, but she's not saying anything. I can't hear. I don't know if she can hear me. I know I can't hear her. And you got this kind of thing where it's like, you know, this is annoying. I'm on the phone, but I don't know if I'm on the phone. Well, sometimes our signal gets messed up. And sometimes while it seems like our phones are connected, they're not. And that's kind of like our prayer life. Sometimes, sometimes we'll be praying or sometimes we'll be thinking and sometimes we'll be trying to reach to God to get our message to him. We'll be praying. We'll be asking him about a certain thing or whatever. But sometimes it feels like he's not there or it feels like he can't hear us or it feels like we can't hear him. And so it feels that we're talking to ourselves or we're not doing anything productive. And that's not the way God wants our prayer life to be. So I just want to talk a little bit about uh, hearing his voice and what we can do in prayer. So in short, prayer is our communicating with God. Prayer is when we talk to God the Father. It's just a conversation if you talk to me or if you go talk to your mama, talk to your daddy. But when we talk to God the Father, that's called prayer. You don't have to be deep in prayer. You don't have to pray in King James Bible English. You don't have to be all deep. Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, alpha and omega, and, you know, go on with all the titles and stuff like that. You can pray if that's, you know, how you want to pray or whatever, but you don't have to pray to God like that. The way you need to pray to God is however you talk. You can pray to God the way that you speak. You address him, of course, you, you, you call him. But you don't, you don't have to have fancy words and stuff like that. Praying is having a conversation with God. And so, of course, as a believer, I want to encourage you to do that. Sometimes there are things in life that we want to pray about. Things are great. God, I thank you for, you know, all this good stuff that's going on. I thank you that I'm just able to enjoy this weather. I'm having a good day. And I thank you that this day is so good. Sometimes we have drama. We have issues. Lord, what is going on? Help me. I pray when I lose something. Sometimes I'll pray right away and sometimes it'll take me like 15 times of going through everything and then I'll be like, man, why don't I just pray about it? I'll pray. Sometimes I have to sit and wait for a minute. Sometimes it comes very quickly and I'll ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, where did I put that? Where is that thing that I'm looking for? Every single time I ask the Holy Spirit, it's only a short time later that I find what I was looking for when I wasn't thinking of looking in that place, you know, I had looked 50 times before, didn't find it on my own. 
it is always best just to pray right away and allow the Holy Spirit to show me. So I have to remember that, and you can remember that too. A lot of different things that we pray for or concerning, but the fact that we pray is what we're talking about. We want to invite God to be a part of our lives in our situation, and we do that through prayer. If you never pray, then you're not allowing God to have more and more presence and access into your life. If you have a phone, if you have a computer app or something like that, when you download the app, they tell you that this app, uh, you know, in order for the app to work, it has to have access to this. So it might be a free app and, um, you know, it might say that, you know, it has to have access to the internet so that it can give you advertisements. Otherwise you have to pay for it. Right? So the, the internet access is kind of an automatic, but then sometimes after you load that app on your device, It'll say this app is requesting access to your microphone or to your camera, or to your contacts or to your photos or to your camera, or to your this or that. And sometimes you need to allow that access so that the app will work. Sometimes they're just being nosy and they just want to collect information. You need to be very careful about that. But the way this goes with prayer is God wants access to your life and God is saying, Hey, can I have access to your friendships? Can I have access to your education? Can I have access to your mental health, your brain, and what's going on in there? And you have to say yes. And one of the ways we give him access is we pray. We ask him about things. We ask him to do things. Uh, we, we, we want his word to be active in our lives. And that happens through prayer. When we ask the Lord to help us, when we ask the Lord to show us, when we ask the Lord what he wants us to do, then that's giving him an open door, open leeway. Without that, he doesn't really have the access that he needs to be the blessing that he wants to be. So we're going to look real quick in a story in 1 Kings chapter 19. I want you to flip, swipe, or pull that verse up. We're in church right now. Where's your Bible? Again, this is the one time at tag where you're allowed to use your device. When we're in person, you can't use a device. But for now, when we're not in person, you can use a device. Go to 1 Kings in the Old Testament uh, 19. Now, this is a prophet that we're going to read about. A great man of God who did some great things, has you know some great stories uh, that were a part of his life and ministry. And we're going to read uh, about him and we're really just going to get like a sound bite. We're just going to get a snippet of what was going on at the particular time. So in 1 Kings chapter 19, I want to look at verse number 11. Now, this is particularly talking about hearing from God. One part of prayer is us talking to God, but the other part is God talking to us. So when we're on the phone with the Lord, we have a part, but it's also he's supposed to have a part. So we're not supposed to monologue where we're the only ones speaking, but we're supposed to dialogue. We're supposed to have his input and our input and his input and our input. That's a conversation. So in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse number 11, it says, he said, go forth. You know, God is talking to Elijah and Elijah is, you know, telling him about some issues and whatever. And God's trying to get his mind right. God says, go forth, stand on the mount or the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. So he goes out to the mount and the Lord like actually passes by, invisible as he was. But he passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break into pieces the rock, rocks before the Lord. So he stands out in the mountain. There's a big old great wind. And then imagine the rocks start falling because the wind is so is so great and so strong and ramming into the mountain it says, but the Lord was not in the wind. You thought the wind was in the Lord, right? Probably like I thought the first time we read this, you, Lord, he says, go stand on the mount. Boom. There's a big old wind right after the Lord passes by. Well, the, the Lord must have been in the wind, right? No, it says the Lord was not in the wind. All right. And then it goes on to say, uh, right after, the wind was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After all that, after the fire specifically, there came a still small voice. 
And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and he went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, saying, What doest thou here, Elijah? So God wasn't in the big, crazy stuff. He was in the still, small voice. Now, sometimes God might come to you in a great wind. He can speak through a fire. He might talk to you through an earthquake, but he might not. So what we have to do is identify the presence of the Lord, but we also need to listen for his voice. God doesn't just move through situations or happenings. God doesn't just change circumstances. He has a voice. Like I try to tell my children all the time, use your words because your words will identify what you're trying to communicate probably better than anything else in most situations. God wants to use his words and he might be using his words, but we have to listen for it. If we're trying to talk and communicate to God, but we're looking at the wind, we're trying to feel the earthquake and see what that means, but we're not listening to the still small voice. We're going to miss what he's saying. And then we might think, well, God's not answering me. Yeah, he's answering, but we're not hearing because we're not listening. In order for us, for me to listen, I got to put this on my ear. I can't do it upside down and put the button by my ear because then, the, you know, the microphone's up here and the speaker's down there. No, I got to do it the right way and put my ear where the speaker is. So when you pray, listen for God might speak to you often and that's the most often way that he speaks that i've found over a long period of time is through a still small voice in order for you to hear a still small voice you need to be quiet you need to listen you ever have the phone and you maybe forgot somebody was on there or whatever and you put the phone down and you hear this hey and you're like what oh man i didn't realize sometimes you might pick up god's voice like that but when you ask a question you want him to show you something Listen for a still, small voice. And I promise you, because he said it in his word, my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they won't follow. So pray to God, I encourage you, invite him into your life, give him access into the different areas of your life. And when you pray, he will answer. All right, my friends, that's it. That's the end of our tag time today. So I did my part, tag, you're it. <laughs>